Okay, again, answering subscriber questions. I love you guys. I love my subscribers, and I appreciate it. This is exciting stuff because this time we're taking a look at X570 number two. And again, to reiterate, when you guys have a question about the motherboard, not just answering the comments, but I think it's going to be appropriate and applicable to do a video so we can help as many people as possible with these questions. Now, what's exciting about this, I want to read the comment, share with you where that came from. We're going to look at, again, PCI Express resource allocation and answer again another question about how this all plays out. To the comment, and this is from Trailer of Dead. And this comment was on the ASUS Hyper M.2 Tuba 16, where the previous video was listed on the ASRock M.2 Tuba 16 quad card. Trailer of Dead commented, Your video is well explained. I have an MSI Meg Godlike X570 with a 5950 and two RTX 3090s. I now want to install four Samsung 980 Pros and my Hyper 4.0 card. Okay, what he has in the title of this video is going to be the MSI Meg Godlike X570 and RTX 3090. What he has with that motherboard is the MSI Expander. Okay, the MSI Expander is MSI's version of a quad card, which lets you install four M.2 NVMe drives on one 16-lane slot electrically, not just mechanically. So if he's already got two RTX 3090s, he's already, uh, well, y'all know the drill. Let's go take a look at the motherboard, look at the slots, let's look at the technical specs, then let's look at the manual, and we'll go through the manual and see if we can itemize how those resources are allocated because uh, change one thing changes everything. Now this is a machine that's already built and I did respond to his question. However, for this video, there's actually three parts to this. One, the motherboard, two, the GPU, and the number three, the hypercard, which is actually the MSI expander. And we'll have links up to all this information. Okay, the first thing I'm looking at is the motherboard. And over here on the right, at a quick glance, I can see we have four PCI Express slots. Number two, let's go to specifications. And I want to drill down. And again, right here to reiterate, all I know is I have four PCI Express by 16 slots. Okay, those are PCI Express by 16 mechanically. And I have three M.2 slots. I'll go ahead and point that out right now. So the next thing we need to do is go to support, manual, and pull down that manual. Okay, MSI does list a block diagram. So it demonstrates all four slots. Go to the CPU. It demonstrates one M.2 drive goes to the CPU. The other M.2 drives are through the chipset, the PCH, which is the Platform Controller Hub. That's an acronym holdover from when we had Northbridge and Southbridge chipsets. That's been a long time ago, but that name holds on. It does not indicate the link from the chipset to the CPU, which is probably four lanes. Now the next thing I'm searching for is PCI Express expansion slots. So let's go take a look at those. Now, for those that are chomping at the bits about the expander card, we'll get to it. So we've got four slots, PCI Express underscore E1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, PCI Express 4.0 by 16. So we have a 16-lane slot, we have an 8-lane slot, and the other two are 4-lane slots. And how many GPUs did he say he's using? Two? Two RTX 3090s? Now, ideally, I would want both of those each on their own dedicated 16-lane slot, but machine's already built resources are already allocated. And the uh, MSI expander card, guess what? SOL. Bummer. There's no way to use that in the machine because we have a four-lane slot and a four-lane slot, which means you could put one M.2 drive on those other two slots. Not a quad adapter and not a dual adapter. And here's another chart they have on page 34, PCI Express bandwidth table. Number one and two to the CPU, oh, excuse me, one, two, and three to the CPU. Good. So your single, where your GPU is at, primary, is a 16-lane slot. And this says PCI Express underscore E3 is an 8-lane slot. Those are starred, so that's not a dedicated resource. So you don't get a dedicated 16-lane and a dedicated 8-lane. Is if you're using one GPU, 16-lane slot. But the same issue because it's an X570 chipset. PCI Express underscore E1 and E3 are shared resource, so each one of those GPUs is using eight lanes. So you've got two RTX 3090s to reiterate. Each one of those is using eight lanes. Okay, to reiterate also the fact the GPU is not the primary issue and you will not saturate the bus running at eight lanes. I would rather have those on 16 lanes, but that's just me. If you want two dedicated 16 lane slots, you're going to have to have something like we've been advocating where you have allocated, dedicated to 16 lane slots like on the Gigabyte TRX40 Designator. Now, 
MSI makes a board that's on the TRX-40 that has two 16-lane slots. But even on this motherboard where I have two 16-lane slots and I have two 8-lane slots, this would be like your setup with two RTX 3090s. I could not put in a quad adapter. All I could put in would be a dual adapter. To do what you really want, you need three 16-lane slots, and that requires a WRX80. And uh, i got to tell you, we've identified four levels of computer builds. I've said this before, and i got to say it again. The entry level is a 10-core. The secondary level would be this, like the X570 or the B550, where you can have 16 cores. This machine right here is a high-end desktop on the TRX40. To do what you want, you've got to leapfrog over this. You want a workstation because you've got to have three 16-lane slots. And on most, not all, but most of the WRX80 workstation motherboards have seven 16-lane slots. One or two of them have six 16-lane slots, which means they have six 16-lane slots and one 8-lane slot. It's the way the vendor decided to allocate resources, but you'd have enough to do all this kind of stuff. But that's why, again, we think the TRX40 is the best bang for the buck. But that machine's already built, so work with what you got. Be happy with what you got. Now, this is the MSI expander we've talked about in the past. It looks like a small GPU. Got a nice big fan on it, and they were the first to do that. And now Gigabyte has decided to do that with their Gigabyte Aorus Extreme. But the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme puts eight drives on one 16-lane slot. And as we've talked about in the past, we think you're better off with using two 16-lane slots. Four drives on one, four drives on the other. When you put eight drives on one card, it's got to go through a PLX chip, and that's where you're going to have a bottleneck. Because three things define the speed of those drives. One, the motherboard chipset. Number two, as we talked about with this one, the memory that's on the drive. And then number three would be the quad card if it has a PLX chip, which most of these don't. And generically, if a quad card requires motherboard bifurcation, it doesn't have a PLX chip. But if the card self-bifurcated and doesn't require a motherboard slot be bifurcated by the motherboard BIOS, that PLX chip is the bottleneck. And we've still got a video to do about the Ampletec Squid, but this came up. This needed to be addressed. Now, this is a good place to comment because I had another comment from Trailer of Dead, and he said he was going to wait for the Sapphire Rapids when I explained to him about this. Okay, if you're going to wait, and I'm going to share this press release with you guys, and this is a good place for a segue, AMD's AM5 platform is going to launch in 2022 with the support for PC Express 5.0, and I think that's going to be huge. So use what you've got. This is one alternative. If you're going to wait, I wouldn't mess with what Intel's doing. I'd jump over it, leapfrog, and wait for what AMD is going to be doing because it's going to be head and shoulders above it. It's, it's about processing power. So I want to thank you guys for joining. Welcome. This is Builder By. My name is Gil Boyd. We're on to the next video. We're out.